Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be making these amazing no sew Christmas baubles. They really are something quite special and they are so quick to make. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So to make this beautiful bauble, you need to cut your pieces into two and a half inch squares. You need 26 of the red, 12 of the white, and then you need your sequin trim and your lovely piece of ribbon. Obviously the choices are up to you what colours you go for here. Absolutely beautiful. Right, so let's get started. So we start off with our polystyrene ball. This is an eight centimeter one. Um, and then we just make sure we've got enough of our lovely sequin trim to go around. I like to cut off a bit longer and we're gonna get our ribbon ready as well. I find if we get everything ready, then we've got no problem. And then we need to count out all of our squares. So remember they are two and a half inches by two and a half inch squares. You need a first color and you need a second color. The first color you need more of, as I said earlier, and it's entirely up to you what colors you go for. But I'm just gonna get all of these ready. I don't think I press enough um, as I go, um, but that's absolutely fine. You can start pressing and do all of them in one go, or you can press as you go, it's up to you. But that was the pins there that I'm gonna show you. Now you fold each piece in half and press, which is really important that you give that a good press. Then using the, the side which has got the fold, place that along the top and then fold each side in to make a triangle shape. So you've got both of those folded in and then press again really important that you give those a good press. It's gonna make it so much easier for you as you go along. So place that to one side and do that for the other color as well. I'm not gonna show you all of the folding and the pressing, but um, I'll just speed that up for you so you can see. But each one exactly the same. All you have to do is make sure that you leave two, two and a half inch squares flat and not pressed um, and you'll see why in a minute, why we need those. So here we go, I'm just gonna press all of those. This one's got a bit of the um, selvage left on it, but it's absolutely fine. If you just make sure you fold that so the selvage is on the reverse, so that the fold is at the front, then it won't matter about that selvage. So it's a really good way of using all those little scraps up, um, a real scrap buster. And if you look now, it's, it's still perfect. So now we're ready to start assembling. So if you remember I mentioned about keeping two not pressed, we're gonna place one on the top here. We do that for the reverse as well, but we need four pins for this and we're just going to simply pin this flat. Now the best way of doing this is to pin into one corner, which I'm going to do now, and then pin on the opposite corner. So don't do the next corner wrong, do opposite, and then you can pull it slightly tightly. So if you see, that's quite nice, and it goes around the ball. 
and then again we're going to do the same pin one and then do the opposite now we've placed that into position we need to put the pins in our triangles open up your triangle take your pin and find the center mark and just go one or two millimeters down into the bottom triangle and place your pin in and pull it all the way through. So you can see there, it's not exactly on the line, you need it on that triangle. And then your pin should come out at a 90 de degree angle to the triangle. Then we're gonna pop that into the center of the square that we made. And then using two further pins, you're gonna pin down those other corners. You need to do that every single time and if you find that you get two bigger layers you can you don't need to pin directly into those corners you can pin slightly further up it's fine so repeating that process with that pin and then we go to the opposite side and we pin just slightly away from the one that we've already put in make sure that it's straight you want to make sure that that's lined up nicely and again pop in your two pins these are really cute little craft pins, um, which I find work best rather than your dressmaking pins. Then we're gonna take the next two and we want to do into the two gaps. So taking our pin, opening it out, going one or two millimeters down, folding it up and popping it in the gap that we've created. And that fits in absolutely beautifully. And then pinning those corners down this can get a bit fiddly, but just take your time. There we are, that's that one pinned down. And now we're gonna go onto the opposite side. So again, with the pin, and we're gonna pin on the opposite, fits in nicely again, and pinning those two corners down. Now for the white, we're gonna simply repeat this process, and then we're gonna fill in the gaps, so you'll see. So for your second colour, you're simply going to go exactly on the triangle and it's about one and a half centimetres down from the point and pin that into place. Again, pinning those corner pieces down as well, making that really nice and flush. And all you're going to do now is go opposite like you did for the red. You're following the exact same pattern that you did previously. So going now into the opposite one, measuring... I do a rough guesstimate, so but it's about one and a half centimetres. If you wanted to add in more layers of fabric, you can do, and you would just place that pin further along. So you could do four layers, five layers of fabric. It's entirely up to you. Pinning the corners down again, and then we're gonna move on to the opposite sides. So there we go, just showing you there where we're gonna go next. And don't worry about the gap that we're going to create. We're going to fill that in with that second fabric. So now we're just getting that last bit into place and we're gonna place the triangles in these gaps here. So we've already prepared all the pins and we're just gonna pop that in. It's, the, it's roughly the same um, distance plus maybe five mil. Um, so it just gives it that lovely star shape on the top. Um, so look, you can see it now starting to form. We go into the next gap if anything doesn't look quite right, don't be afraid of taking that piece of fabric out and repositioning it. It's not permanent, you can change it, so don't be afraid of that. If you bunch these two close together and then you notice that your ribbon doesn't cover the join, 
don't be afraid to just take it apart and do it again. And putting this one into place and then we've got one more to do on this row. And then all you're going to do with your next colour, which is back to the red and the gold, is to go round exactly as you've done for the white ones. Um, it's really, really not difficult at all. So pinning that last one into place, or oh, the second from last one into place. Final one, pop that pin in again, pulling it through, folding it up, making sure it's nice and neat, and finding whereabouts you want to pin that in. Just check that it looks okay. Yep, that looks okay. And pinning it down. You can already see that lovely, lovely star in the center. Now we're gonna go onto all of the reds all the way on the outside. And that's all the top layer done. Now we are going to do exactly the same on the reverse. I'm gonna do that off camera. You don't need to see it done twice, I'm sure. So here we go, that's both sides now done. I think you'll agree, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, we're going to take our sequin trim. Now the first thing you want to do before you cut this to size is I like to pin it into place on the um, end and with the sequins you you might find it easier to go in the gap of the sequins rather than through the sequins so pinning that into place and then tightly wrapping it around making sure that all that fabric is hidden behind the trim going all the way around and just overlapping slightly and trimming it off now what I'll do is I'll pull that back about two inches and I'll pin it into place because I've got everything caught in there nicely. I don't want to take the whole trim off. Then we move on to the ribbon that we use for hanging. So simply snip off as long a piece as you want, place it through the sequin and tie that top into a knot. Um, if you wanted to stitch that down, you could. Maybe you want to put a bead on there, you can do. It's up to you entirely, but I just like to use a simple knot making sure that's lovely and tight, taking your sequin trim, positioning it and wriggling it along to the to where the join is. Oh, it just came off a little bit there, but that's absolutely fine. Then using your two pins, pinning down that sequin trim again, securing the ribbon. If you want to place a pin through where the ribbon is as well to keep it in one position, then you can. I haven't done so on this occasion. But there we go, there's your bauble all done. I think you'll agree, it looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see any more videos, click the links. Bye bye.